Rivers are among the most captivating natural features on our planet. They have shaped the Earth's landscape for millions of years, carrying water, sediment, and life through diverse regions. Welcome to Digital Learning. In this video, we will explore the intriguing phenomenon of river erosion, including the factors influencing it, the processes involved, different types of river erosion, and the remarkable features that result from this relentless force of nature. Several factors influence the erosion of rivers, making each one a unique force of nature. Firstly, the slope or gradient of the river's course plays a vital role. Steeper slopes result in faster water flow and more erosive power. Secondly, the type of rock and soil found in the river's basin significantly affects erosion. Softer rocks are more easily eroded, while harder rocks may resist the erosive forces. Thirdly, climate and precipitation levels impact the flow of rivers, as heavy rainfall can lead to increased water flow and erosion. Human activities such as deforestation and urbanization also contribute to river erosion by altering natural landscapes. River erosion is driven by several complex processes. Hydraulic action is the mechanical force of the moving water, dislodging and carrying away sediments. Abrasion involves the physical wearing down of riverbanks and riverbeds by the constant collision of sediment and rocks carried by the river. Corrosion, the third process, is the chemical breakdown of rocks and sediments by the river's water, which can dissolve minerals and transport them downstream. These processes work in tandem to shape the landscape and create stunning features over time. There are four main types of river erosion, vertical erosion, lateral erosion, headward erosion, and backward erosion. Vertical erosion deepens the riverbed, creating V-shaped valleys, while lateral erosion widens the channel, forming floodplains. Headward erosion involves the extension of a river's course in an upstream direction, while backward erosion results from the retreat of waterfalls, often leading to the formation of river terraces. These varied types of erosion contribute to the diversity of landscapes found along rivers. The relentless work of river erosion over millions of years has shaped our world and created stunning geological features. One of the most recognizable results of river erosion is the formation of canyons, like the Grand Canyon in the United States. Gorges are one of the most awe-inspiring products of river erosion. They are deep, narrow canyons that often exhibit steep, towering cliffs carved by the relentless force of water. The Victoria Falls Gorge in Africa is a remarkable example, where the Zambezi River has cut a dramatic chasm through the Earth's surface. Gorges are not only stunning natural wonders, but also offer valuable insights into the geology and history of the region. Rapids are another captivating outcome of river erosion. As a river's water rushes through a steep and uneven channel, it can create turbulent whitewater stretches known as rapids. These fast-moving sections add an element of excitement to river exploration and serve as a testament to the power of flowing water. Rapids are beloved by adventurers and enthusiasts for their thrilling challenges. Waterfalls are perhaps the most famous and mesmerizing results of river erosion. As rivers encounter hard rock layers that resist erosion, they cascade over the edge, forming breathtaking waterfalls. The iconic Niagara Falls, created by the Niagara River, is a prime illustration of the extraordinary beauty and force generated by this natural process. Waterfalls are not only scenic marvels, but also significant sources of hydropower and recreation. Potholes, also known as rock basins or plunge pools, are small, bowl-shaped depressions carved into the riverbed by the swirling action of water and sediment. These features can vary in size and depth, and they often add character to a river's course. Over time, potholes can become natural traps for sediment, contributing to further riverbed erosion. Interlocking spurs are unique features that illustrate the intricate dance between rivers and the landscape. In areas with resistant rock formations, rivers are forced to meander around the obstructions, forming interlocking spurs. These natural features resemble a series of serrated ridges that project into the river's path, showcasing the dynamic interplay between the river's erosive forces and the enduring strength of the surrounding geological formations. Rivers are nature's diligent couriers, constantly in motion, transporting vast quantities of sediment, rocks, and organic matter across the Earth's surface. In this part of the video, we will embark on a journey to unravel the captivating process of how rivers transport their load, exploring the key factors that influence this intricate natural choreography. Rivers employ an array of mechanisms to transport their load, each suited to different conditions and sediment sizes. Four primary transport mechanisms are involved, saltation, traction, suspension, and solution. 
Saltation is the hopping or bouncing of small particles, such as pebbles and gravel, along the riverbed. These particles are lifted and carried by the current before they drop and ricochet, creating a characteristic tapping sound. Saltation is most active during times of higher flow or increased energy in the river. Traction involves the rolling or dragging of larger, heavier particles, like boulders and cobbles, along the riverbed. These substantial rocks are too heavy to be lifted by the flow, but the river's energy allows them to be pushed or dragged as the water flows over them. In suspension, fine particles such as silt and clay are carried within the water column, creating the characteristic turbid appearance of many rivers. These particles remain suspended due to the turbulence of the water, forming the sediment load. Solution Solution is the process by which certain minerals and salts dissolve in the river water and are transported in a dissolved state. This is more common in areas with high concentrations of soluble minerals. The process of river transportation is not uniform, but is influenced by a myriad of factors that determine the types of sediment carried and the speed at which it moves. Several primary factors impact how a river transports its load. The velocity of the river's flow plays a crucial role. Faster flowing rivers have more energy to carry and transport larger particles, while slower flows are limited to transporting finer sediments. The size and weight of the sediment particles have a significant influence. Smaller, lighter particles are more likely to be carried in suspension, while larger, heavier particles may require traction or saltation for transport. The river's gradient or slope affects its velocity. Steeper slopes result in faster flows, which can transport larger particles. Shallower gradients are associated with slower flows, typically carrying finer sediments. The volume of water in the river, influenced by factors such as precipitation and snowmelt, can impact its capacity to transport sediments. Seasonal variations in water volume can lead to fluctuations in sediment transport. Vegetation and human activities are also a factor. The presence of vegetation along riverbanks can trap sediments, affecting transport patterns. Additionally, human activities like deforestation, construction, and mining can alter natural landscapes, impacting sediment transport. Rivers are not just bodies of water, they are dynamic forces of change, shaping the world as they flow. While rivers are renowned for their ability to erode and transport materials, they are equally significant for their role in deposition. The process of river deposition involves the settling and accumulation of sediments carried by rivers, ultimately shaping the landscape. The deposition of sediments in rivers is governed by several key factors. One of the most influential factors is the river's flow velocity. When the velocity decreases, the river loses its ability to transport sediment, causing particles to settle and accumulate. The size and weight of the sediment also play a role. Larger and heavier particles settle more quickly. Additionally, the presence of vegetation along the riverbanks can trap sediments and promote deposition. And human activities like channelization and dam construction can significantly alter deposition patterns. River deposition gives rise to a variety of landforms and features that significantly contribute to the Earth's physical geography. Alluvial fans and bajadas are fan-shaped or gently sloping landforms created when a river exits a mountainous region and deposits sediments as it spreads out onto a flatter plain. These features are often characterized by rich, fertile soils, making them valuable for agriculture. Meanders and oxbow lakes are formed when a river's flow causes it to curve and create sinuous bends. Over time, deposition occurs on the inside of these bends, forming point bars and promoting vegetation growth. Sometimes the river's meanders become so pronounced that it cuts off a loop, leading to the formation of an oxbow lake a peaceful, crescent-shaped body of water that highlights the continuous evolution of river landscapes. Floodplains are flat, low-lying areas adjacent to rivers, which are periodically submerged during floods. River deposition on these floodplains contributes to nutrient-rich soils and supports diverse ecosystems. Floodplains are often cultivated for agriculture and are essential for mitigating flood risks. River braids occur in regions with high sediment loads and multiple channels. These channels frequently divide and rejoin, creating a braided pattern of river courses. This phenomenon is particularly prevalent in glacial regions and arid environments with highly variable water flow. River braids can lead to complex and unique landscapes. Levees are raised embankments along riverbanks, created by the accumulation of sediment during flooding events. They act as natural barriers against floods and provide fertile soils for agriculture. However, over time, levees may increase the risk of catastrophic flooding if not properly managed. Estuaries are the transitional zones where rivers meet the sea, 
characterized by brackish water. Mixing of fresh water and salt water and dynamic deposition, estuaries are vital habitats for numerous species, including fish and birds, and are often key locations for human settlements and trade. Deltas are the ultimate manifestation of river deposition, formed where a river meets a body of standing water, such as the sea or a large lake. The deposition of sediment in deltas creates intricate branching channels and rich wetland environments. Deltas are not only ecologically diverse, but also fertile lands crucial for agriculture and human habitation. River deposition is an intricate and ever-evolving process that shapes the Earth's surface, in diverse ways leaving a lasting mark on our world, highlighting the interconnectedness of geology and ecology. Rivers are dynamic entities that evolve over time, transforming from their youthful beginnings to mature and ultimately to their old age. This process is known as the river profile development, and it is characterized by distinct stages that reflect the changing nature of a river's course, shape, and features. The youthful stage of a river is marked by its early formation in the upper reaches of its watershed. It is characterized by several key features. Firstly, the river in its youthful stage typically has a steep gradient, which results in fast-flowing, turbulent waters. This swift flow is essential for the erosion of its channel and the transportation of sediments. As the river descends from higher elevations, it forms V-shaped valleys, and the energy of the flowing water leads to the deepening of the riverbed. In the youthful stage, the river is often characterized by rapids, waterfalls, and cascades as it overcomes obstacles in its path. As the river progresses into the mature stage, significant changes occur in its profile and characteristics. The river's gradient begins to decrease, and its flow becomes more steady and meandering. The once deep V-shaped valley transitions into a wider U-shaped valley as the river erodes its banks and creates floodplains. In the mature stage, meanders become more prominent, and oxbow lakes may form as the river meanders and cuts across the necks of its loops. In this stage, the river's flow is less turbulent, and sediment deposition begins to balance out erosion, resulting in a more stable channel. The old stage of a river represents the culmination of its life cycle, and it is characterized by distinctive features and behaviors. The river's gradient is significantly reduced, and its flow is much slower and more serene compared to its youthful and mature stages. The once meandering river may become sluggish, and it exhibits a tendency to meander less, causing cutoffs and the formation of abandoned meanders. The U-shaped valley becomes broader and flatter, and floodplains may cover extensive areas. In the old stage, deposition processes dominate, leading to the formation of extensive alluvial plains and deltas at the river's mouth. Deltas, in particular, are prominent landforms at this stage, as the river deposits large amounts of sediment as it meets the sea or a standing body of water. These areas are often fertile and support rich ecosystems. Rivers are not static, they are in constant motion, carving and reshaping landscapes, reflecting the intricate relationship between water, earth, and time. What is river capture? I'm glad you asked. River capture, also known as stream piracy, occurs when one river diverts the flow of another river, often leading to the abandonment of the original course. This phenomenon is typically driven by geological changes or tectonic activity. River capture is a dynamic process that reshapes the course of rivers and can significantly impact the local landscape. When one river captures another, it results in the formation of a new course for the capturing river. This new path often follows a steeper gradient and may cut through previously uneroded rock, creating dramatic gorges or canyons. On the other hand, the abandoned river's course may gradually fill with sediment and become a dry or seasonal riverbed, leaving behind the remnants of its former path. On the other hand, river rejuvenation is a process that occurs when a river responds to changes in its base level, typically caused by tectonic uplift or a drop in sea level. When a river rejuvenates, it experiences an increase in its erosive power and adjusts its course accordingly. This results in a series of distinctive features and changes in the river's behavior. One of the most visible features of a rejuvenated river is the incision of its channel into the landscape. The river's increased energy and gradient enable it to cut through rock layers, forming deep gorges and canyons. These can be seen as awe-inspiring landforms, showcasing the river's relentless erosive forces. Additionally, the river may form terraces along its course. Terraces are flat, stepped landforms that were once riverbeds at higher levels. They are often the remnants of older courses that have been abandoned as the river incised into the landscape. 
These terraces provide valuable insights into the river's historical activity and the changes in base level over time. River capture and river rejuvenation are essential processes in the dynamic world of fluvial geology. They illustrate how rivers adapt to changes in their surroundings and demonstrate the power of water to shape the Earth's surface. Ultimately, drainage systems play a fundamental role in shaping the landscape, and they can take on various forms, each with its distinct characteristics. Three important types of drainage systems are antecedent, superimposed, and reversed drainage systems. Antecedent drainage system. Antecedent drainage systems are created when a river's course predates geological changes in the landscape. They persistently maintain their original path despite tectonic uplift or mountain formation. The river has been eroding its course long before the land uplift occurred. And this process leaves the river entrenched in its path, often resulting in deep, winding valleys. One of the most famous examples is the Colorado River, which continues to flow through the Grand Canyon despite the canyon's formation through uplift. Superimposed drainage systems Superimposed drainage systems occur when a river's path is established on top of existing geological features. In this scenario, the river's initial course was determined by a different landscape, often much older and softer rock layers. Subsequently, the landscape changed and harder rock layers were exposed, leading the river to erode through these layers, creating distinct features like waterfalls or gorges. The River Thames in England with its waterfall at the town of Henley-on-Thames is an example of a superimposed drainage system. Reversed drainage system. Reversed drainage systems result from a reversal in the flow of a river, often due to tectonic movements or the formation of a dam. These systems can lead to the river flowing upstream or reversing its course to find a new outlet. Rivers are essential sources of fresh water for both humans and ecosystems. They provide drinking water, support agriculture, and offer habitats for a wide variety of species. Rivers have historically served as vital transportation routes, facilitating the movement of goods and people. Even in the modern era, rivers continue to play a significant role in trade and commerce. Rivers are agents of erosion and deposition, which contribute to the creation of diverse landscapes, fertile soils, and mineral resources. Rivers offer opportunities for recreation and tourism, from water sports and fishing to scenic cruises, providing economic benefits to local communities. Despite the positive impacts of rivers, rivers can cause destructive floods, which pose a risk to human settlements and agriculture, leading to property damage and loss of life. Human activities often result in pollution of river systems, degrading water quality and harming aquatic life. The alteration of river courses, such as through dam construction, can lead to habitat destruction and loss of biodiversity. Excessive erosion and sedimentation in rivers can also negatively impact infrastructure, such as bridges and dams, and disrupt ecosystems. Rivers continue to be essential lifelines for the planet, providing valuable resources and serving as windows into the Earth's geological history. That's all for today. Did you enjoy the video? Leave your thoughts in the comments section.